There's an especially difficult form of narcissism that you may encounter, and uh, that's the, the narcissist who is also a psychopath. I'm gonna tell you straight up front, I don't work with psychopaths because they're impossible. Now, I will work with people who have lived with narciss or the psychopath and who have to engage with them and trying to, they're trying to figure out how to disengage. Narcissists, of course, are very into themselves, but when we talk about a narcissist who's also a psychopath, we're talking about a very, very troubled soul and they are far down on the malignant end of the spectrum. And, and I wanna talk about the psychopath in the context of what we refer to as the dark triad. Uh, when we talk about the dark triad, there are three different elements that uh, go into the makeup of this individual, and that is they do have narcissism, they have what's referred to as Machiavellianism, and then they have the psychopathy uh, that's there. So I, I wanna just kinda touch base on those three, and then I wanna focus especially on the psychopath. Now, of course, when we talk about narcissists, we talk about people who are very entitled, they're highly self-focused, they have a strong need to be superior, they have a very low regard for other individuals' feelings. Many of you know people who, uh, who have those kind of characteristics and uh, they can be quite common. But then when we add to it, uh, as part of that dark triad, Machiavellianism, uh, by the way, back in the uh, 14, 1500s, uh, Machiavelli was a, uh, uh, a diplomat in, uh, in his place, and he was known for using any form that he could of guile or cunning or uh, deviousness or deception or treachery to establish and maintain power. And in the Machiavellian way of thinking, uh, the the ends justifies the means. And so if you have to lie and cheat and cajole and, and uh, do all sorts of things to make people do your bidding, they're quite willing to do so because it's all about uh, finding power, grabbing it and, and holding on to it uh, for whatever it's worth. And so they, uh, and they also have a strong ability to rationalize why they have to do that because uh, you know, dishonesty is something that they don't really care anything about. You, you remember that movie scene where uh, Jack Nicholson was on the witness stand and he was saying, you can't handle the truth. Uh, the, the Machiavellian kind of person is like, you know what, I, I, I just need to do whatever I have to do because you can't handle the truth anyway, but I, I know where I'm going. And, uh, and they're extremely devious in the way that they engage with people. Honesty is, uh, you know, expedient. And then we have the psychopath. That, that's the third leg of that triad. And when we talk about the, the psychopath, often we use the term antisocial disorder or personality disorder. Uh, these are individuals who chronically push against societal norms. Uh, and le legalities mean nothing to them. Morality means nothing to them. Right and wrong is something that they just don't consult. They just do whatever, almost in an animalistic kind of way, whatever they their uh, goal uh, prompts them to do. They, When I say they have no empathy, I mean zero, zilch, uh, nada. They have no sense of remorse. If you're in a conflict or a dispute with them, uh, they can uh, they can be extremely difficult to the point of impossible to engage with. Often the psychopaths have a history going back into their childhood and adolescent years of oppositional defiant disorder, uh, things of that nature, and they, it's a tends to be a very deeply held uh, kind of pattern. Uh, they have no particular conscience, lying, deception, cheating, uh, criminal behavior. All of that is something that's quite uh, common for them. Uh, they're abusive, mean, and cruel. And, and then, the, the, to me anyway, the single most distinguishing feature of a psychopath is they have, uh, they're, they're impervious to the pain that they generate and perpetuate in other individuals. In other words, these are very, very difficult people to engage with. And many times throughout my practice, I've, uh, and more often than not, they're male. Sometimes you have females that are that, but um, more commonly they're male. But I've talked to people who have uh, attached themselves to these individuals, and now they're trying to get away from them, and they can be incredibly difficult. Sometimes psychopaths can actually see their pathology, and it's almost as though they, they say, yeah, that's the way I am. I, I'm, I'm mean, I'm tough, and rules don't really matter to me. 
but that's why I'm uh, that's why I'm the successful person that I am, or that's why you need to uh, to bow to me because uh, no one messes with me, and they can actually embrace it kind of as a uh, badge of honor, and it, it's almost as though they can be proud of being that way. Uh, their low level of conscience uh, allows them to just embrace meanness as a way of life. Now, I'm going to go through a whole list here of things that I've jotted down that uh, can let you know if you might be dealing with somebody who uh, represents all three of these elements, narcissism, Machiavellianism, and, and psychopathy, uh, and uh, see if this is something that might describe some of the individuals that you are engaged with, and then we're going to talk about what you might be able to do with them. These individuals, uh, first, they can be very bold in forcing dominance. Uh, and that they'll leave no room for you to imagine who's going to be the dominant person. They must be the top dog in whatever group they're with, and uh, they don't they don't make any kind of um, hesitation about that. No apologies for being that way. Uh, also, condescension is the only way that they think. They they are so disdainful toward other individuals, and they must be in the superior position. In addition, they're easily bored. Uh, they're constantly looking for that next stimulation, and typically uh, uh, they can be drawn towards themes and entertainment themes of meanness, and they're, they're thrill seekers, and they're always looking for something that's going to stimulate that, that, uh, that dark and angry side of who they are. They might be able to blend well with other individuals for a short period of time, but even then it's uh, it's illustrated as be being nothing but a, a, an inside uh, means to finally figure out how to exploit other individuals. But haughtiness is constantly right there underneath the surface when they engage with people. Uh, another uh, element, meanness is simply part of who they are uh, to the point of them being highly calloused or deeply. And when I say deeply, I mean deeply controlling toward other individuals. Uh, another ingredient is they absolutely will not take responsibility for any kind of problems that they are involved in. Uh, they use heavy uh, uh, communications of shame and blame, and if you're on the bad side of them and you're trying to get away, they can al also be a, a people that will stalk you, or they can text bomb, or uh, they can uh, uh, go into legal abuse toward you. Uh, when, when people try to divorce uh, from these individuals, they can just make it miserable inside the court system, or if you've done business with them, or if there's some other ways that they can uh, legally abuse you, they're more than willing to do that and they can find lawyers that can help them in that regard. It's an awful kind of situation. Psychopaths, uh, when you attempt to plead your case with them, they, that's just fuel to their soul. Uh, as you try to, uh, uh, to plead your case, it's like now that I know you're showing you're vulnerable, I will crush you. That's how they think. Rules, norms, regulations mean nothing to them. They're pervasively arrogant. Uh, they could not care less about any kind of impact that they leave on other individuals. They don't think like normal people. Uh, dominance is the only way that they relate. And I say that that's an understatement because they must be in the dominant position. Uh, they're prone towards emotional abuse, verbal abuse, vicious attacks on your character, uh, if you have wronged them, they will seek vengeance against you. That's the way they think. Uh, any tender emotion that they uh, might experience is going to be very faint at best, and it's going to be very shallow. For example, uh, if you think, well, that person showed a little bit of love, or maybe I, I detected a little bit of guilt there, uh, it's going to be very short-lived because they don't experience tender emotions, uh, and they don't uh, uh, listen to what those emotions might say. And uh, if you express tenderness or, or uh, if you show yourself to be soft, then they'll come in and think, good. Uh, that means that uh, I can crush you because gentle people, uh, they're just nothing but a bunch of wimps. Now, that's a whole lot that I'm saying about the, the person that's, uh, that's in this psychopathic tendency with the Machiavellianism and the narcissism. 
these individuals are impossible to deal with. And when I say I don't counsel with them, it's like, well, first of all, uh, hardly any of them are going to show up in here. And if they do, it's only going to be short lived. And if they do, there's, it's their way of trying to figure me out so that they can uh, try to dominate me and, and then find out whatever flaws I have and discount everything. I mean, they're impossible. So uh, let, let's think about some ways that you can respond. And none of it's all that great. First, when you're dealing with a psychopath, reveal as little about yourself as you can get away with. Second, don't let them know how intimidated you are because <laughs> they, they love that. Um, but uh, you just kind of want to try to have as much of a neutral kind of a mindset as you can. Third, uh, refuse to argue with them because when you do plead your case, uh, they're just going to come at you with that vengeance. They will try to crush you, as I said a few minutes ago. Fourth, do make sure that you are balanced enough to have some healthy individuals in your life so that you don't allow that psychopath to completely dominate you because uh, they do want to just kind of uh, come in and just completely take over your life. And so make sure you have healthy people. And then uh, fifth, as you do have healthy individuals, make sure that you keep them informed of what you're dealing with so that you will have some allies. And then uh, uh, sixth and finally, get out as quickly as you can. And it may be that you'll have to use legal means to get away from them, but, uh, uh, or uh, establish consequences through the court systems. These are bad people. And uh, these are individuals that uh, uh, all the norms of trying to do conflict resolution simply aren't gonna work. It's really sad when I have to talk about things of this nature because a guy like me, I want to say, you know, there's some, uh, there's, there can be some redeemable value in other, in, in just about every uh, person, but these people are completely broken souls all the way down to the core of their character. They've just hardly got anything good that they can draw upon. So if you are dealing with somebody that has that dark triad of narcissism, Machiavellianism, and uh, psychopathy, or psychopathy, then stay away and uh, and take care of yourself, practice self-care. This is one of these topics that I am reluctant to talk about heavily because it's just so um, dismal to think about it. But if you're in a, a situation where this is uh, wh what you're dealing with, I'm hoping that you will, in fact, let other individuals know what your situation is so that that psychopath doesn't completely destroy you. All right, well, that's kind of a tough one to, for us to get into. Now, uh, if you've not already uh, sub uh, hit that subscribe button that's below, I, I would encourage you to do so because we do have other kind of videos that we can get into and talk about how you can practice that self-care. Uh, and we, we also have an email list I would encourage you to, uh, uh, to sign up for so that you can uh, be apprised of things that we have going on. In, in a case like this, it, it's usually pretty good to have somebody that you can uh, look to for counseling. So if you do have someone in your area, I would encourage you to seek that person out. And if you don't have somebody in your area, we've vetted a group that's become our sponsor uh, who can help you with online counseling. And there's a link below that, uh, that you can be assisted in that regard. In addition, we do have my uh, free to be uh, course workshop, and I would encourage you to look into that. Uh, you can find that to be something that would help you trying to determine what to do with the controllers in your life. And also we have our websites, survivingnarcissism.tv and uh, drlescarter.com, um, in addition to books, et cetera, down there. You know, th there's some people who are just so broken that uh, the only thing you can do is to say, I I've got to find you in my rear view mirror. But in the meantime, I want you to have enough self-respect and I want you to have enough of your own sense of dignity and initiative that you will seek ways to find your own place of goodness. I want you to be a person who can find steadiness and peace. And I want you to be around people that know uh, the reasonableness of living with mutual respect.